this series goes all the way back to the Big A days. And one of the closest and strangest finishes, 1991. 19 all tie. Nebraska has a chance to win in the closing seconds. Watch the snowballs coming out of the stands toward the Husker kicker. Colorado fans trying to help out their team. And the kick was blocked. I guess it worked. Last year in Lincoln, Nebraska was aided by a 57-yard field goal by Alex Henry. This time, no snowballs. Thank you. Nebraska is led by their defense, and particularly defensive tackle in Dominican Sue. Most scouts say that Sue will be taken at the top three picks in the NFL draft. But which team's offense can work the most consistently? That's the biggest question. It's an after Turkey Day drumstick from the Big 12 Conference. It's Nebraska, Colorado. Next. to College Football, presented by Kay Jewelers. Today, featuring the Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Colorado Buffaloes from Folsom Field in Boulder. And here come the Buffs. Ron Franklin along with Ed Cunningham and welcome to an absolutely wondrous day here in Boulder Colorado. Let's cut to the chase and get one story taken care of and it says in the Denver Post this morning the headlines in Hawk we trust. Dan Hawkins is going to be back as the head coach of the Buffaloes next year. What's your reaction to that. Well I think from a program level this was the right move when Dan Hawkins was hired they said they'd give him five years to try to turn this thing around. He's only had four so I think this was the right decision for them to keep their work. Then as far as making the statement this morning that he's back I think it was huge for today's ball game. Of course uh, Colorado not going to a bowl game so this will be like a bowl game and these players do like Dan Hawkins and I think getting this out of the way is a really good idea for the outlook of this game for uh, Colorado. Let's talk about the Nebraska Cornhuskers and everything in Nebraska this year starts with defense. They are the only team in America that has had three national defensive players of the week and it started of course with Indomitian and Sue as most things do for Nebraska defensively that monster game against Missouri on a Thursday night in the rain really got on the national radar and then because of the double teams that Sue started having Jared Crick has the huge game against Baylor and then of course the wonderful game by O'Hanlon against Oklahoma so they've got a bunch of frontline guys Carl Pelini the defensive coordinator Bo Pelini his head coach brother two of the finest defensive coaches in the country offensively for the Huskers it's been kind of like this at times they have sputtered but Roy Halu the running back is now healthy all the difference in the world yeah they were trying to find anything Sean Watson the offensive coordinator uh, told us it was like the Apollo 13 mission they were spreading everything out on the table trying to get these guys home now they have Halu one of the best backs in the Big 12 healthy He's going to pound it 25, 30 times today. Surrounded by beauty and the mountains here in Boulder, we got college football coming up. It's Nebraska and Colorado coming up next. Head coach Bill Pelini, he's been preaching to his kids all week. We've improved, but we're not good enough to take anybody lightly or overlook them. Especially they're going, of course, they won the Big 12 North last week against Kansas State, so they're going to play Texas next week for the championship, but they're not good enough in Bo Pelini's mind to quote unquote rest their starters like he used to do when he was in the NFL as an assistant coach. They have to make incremental games each games each game, and he feels that way strongly about today. Kanonic will kick it off. Buffaloes won the toss, and they have elected to go on offense they did not defer so Kanata kicks it off and the way the wind is blowing today it's swirling in the stadium so but the wind is to his back and this is a high spinner that's going to go into the end zone two yards and Lockridge will return it and Lockridge will not make it to the 20 yard line Time for the quarterback profile and a closer look at Tyler Hansen. Young man who had his red shirt pulled last year when he was a true freshman midseason. They were trying to red shirt him again this year when uh, Cody Hawkins, Dan Hawkins' son, was struggling against Texas. They put him in the game, gave him a little bit of spark. More of an athletic guy, but let's not forget last week against Oklahoma State, injured his right thumb. X rays were negative. Seemed okay during practice, but if he starts struggling, maybe we'll see Hawkins come off the bench again. Nebraska pretty tight at the line of scrimmage. Nebraska does send, or Colorado sends a man in motion. Hanson to throw on first down. 
He's looking for the tight end. Now he's going to put it on his hip and run, and he'll pick up about six yards on the play. Here are the impact players for Colorado. Rodney Stewart had a hamstring uh, injury earlier in the year. Good, tough runner, little guy, but he pounds for extra yardage. Ryer Gear, senior playing his last game here, has become a big part of the play action package at tight end. And uh, Marcus Burton, a big 265 pound middle linebacker, had a forced fumble last week against Oklahoma State. They, he'll need to do that today, I think. Some turnovers, I think, would be necessary for uh, Colorado to get a short field. Lockridge. Fakes to him and the pass overthrown. And uh, had a receiver wide open and just overthrew McKnight. McKnight looking for 10 receptions if possible today to uh, become the new all time leader for the Buffaloes receiving. And Hanson just too tall on that one. And you see right away. Uh, you think not, it's bothering him? Yeah. Uh, you know, that maybe was a little miscommunication. It looked like he and McKnight were talking to each other. I think Hanson may have expected him to run that route a little deeper. Now the blitz picked up nicely. Hanson gets it away and it's thrown out of bounds. And the hat came flying and the reason for that if you were watching LSU Ole Miss last week the receiver had gone out of bounds and it has to you throw a beanbag or a hat one of the two. So it's going to be fourth down as you look at Coach Hawkins. And I think he has weathered uh, the storm around here the hot seat that he has been on all year very well. He has not lost his positive demeanor continued to work and I think uh, fought through it pretty well. Delalo to kick he's a left footer. Niles Paul runs into his own man and is not going to go more than about five yards 38 in the punt and seven on the return and you got to give one of the Huskers credit <laughs> yeah. for making the tackle. So it's time now for the quarterback profile for the Colorado Buffaloes and the first look at Zach Lee and we talked about at the open how they were putting in a bunch of different pieces in this offense trying to get some running game going. Remember Cody Green came in and started two games the freshman who's more of a runner but Zach Lee has calmed down. It's more about managing the game and not putting your defense in a bad position because they do run a really conservative offense now with this defense. Hello the tailback they fake to him. Pass thrown complete to the tight end Mike McNeil. Mike, of all the tight ends, and they have a group of them, is the man that is most active and they throw the football to most. Impact players for the Huskers of Nebraska are Niles Paul is the down the field receiver. They will go for him uh, on some play action fakes. Mike McNeil who we just saw has been a big beneficiary of the run game getting him more involved in the play action pass and Alex Henry who of course kicked the 57 yard school record last year to put Nebraska up also now their punter and very good. Hey Lou. I tell you he's offset he'll pick up a couple of yards he's offset with his stance now at almost eight and a half yards behind where the ball is uh, is being snapped and they've tweaked uh, the upfront blocking schemes a bit as the season has gone on become more of a straight ahead they're not trapping as much uh, and this offensive line has started to gain some confidence of course when you have a guy with a vision of Halu it makes you look awfully good you don't have to hold your blocks as long. So it's third down. Line to make is the 43 yard line of Colorado. Blitz coming, delayed in the flat, throws it complete, and that is enough for the first down to Brandon Kinnick. Ed, how about your game plan for the offense of Nebraska? Well, it's not very mysterious, but they're going to need to pound Helu probably over 25 carries, I think, before this is all over. Don't forget Rex Burkhead, the freshman, is back. McNeil and Paul off play action. We've already seen them trying to set that up. And, of course, the safeties for Colorado are not very fast. They have to stay put. They cannot start coming down too much in the run game or else Niles Paul is going over their head. Helu bounces it outside. Got one block, but going to be hauled down at the 35 by Benjamin Bernie, a senior out of Lone Tree, Colorado. And Bernie, a young man that they moved to remember that disastrous defensive outing against uh, Toledo back at the beginning of the season where their safeties just looked bad in that game. And they took uh, Bernie, a guy who's been through a lot, five different surgeries, and they needed some speed, so they took him from corner and moved him to safety. That was a good open field tackle.
Second down for the Huskers. First series of the afternoon for them offensively. Buffalo's had one and it was three and out. Play action here. Lee going to try to run and he's going to be sacked. Hit behind the line of scrimmage at the 40 yard line and it's another senior Marcus Burton out of Channel View Texas. Here's Burton right here just coming on a straight blitz. And uh, Zach Lee saw this. That's a uh, double blitz where the linebackers follow each other and they can only pick up one of them. And Burton, who played a really nice game against Oklahoma State, key guy in the middle, especially when they're going to get pounded. And here you are at that 40 yard line. Uh, I would think some type of draw or screen for Nebraska here. Third down, line to make is the 29. Burton, by the way, is one of the captains for this afternoon's ball game. Blitz off the corner. Being hit and going to be sacked again this time. It's Benjamin Burney. And Nebraska has a player shaken up. One of the offensive linemen is still down. That's DJ Jones, who's uh, subbing for Mar Marcel Jones at right tackle. But a nice blitz off the corner, and Bernie goes unblocked. That's a blown, that's a blown protection. Either Zach Lee didn't thought that uh, the safety was going to be picked up, or there was somebody that uh, blew an assignment there. But he ran free, and Zach Lee needs to know that. Alex Henry, place kicker and punter, kicks this one for the sideline, and he has to because of the strength of his leg, and it is touched dead inside the five-yard line. So there is no score. Nebraska and Colorado. This rivalry has provided some classic games. And when we come back, you'll see the first of four that we'll show you today. Number two, Colorado defeats number three, Nebraska, on their way to claiming the Big E Conference title and a share of the national championship with Georgia Tech that season. So we are back and look at the field position for the Buffaloes. The two yard line. Henry's kick headed out of bounds and a touch dead by one of the Huskers before it reached the end zone. So they'll keep it on the ground and the running play. A little bit of space now out to round the fourth. Let's go to New York and John Saunders. John. Well, on the Sports Center right now presented by Best Buy. As we told you earlier, Tiger Woods was injured in a car accident after his car hit a tree in a fire hydrant. News is now he was taken to the hospital but has been released with facial lacerations. Alabama facing Auburn today. And Auburn had a 14-0 lead. So Trent Richardson goes in from two yards out. Auburn still leads it 14-7. Ron. Oh, John. Second down. And the running play to get it outside and bouncing is Stewart and Rodney Stewart may have picked up certainly the biggest first down of this afternoon when you start not only in the shadow of your goalpost against this Nebraska defense that is quite a task and they're right on it and I think don't mess around just go straight ahead here your offensive line for Colorado has struggled all year Rodney Stewart coming back healthy has been a big deal for them but uh, I don't think you want to oh boy and that's Larry Asante. Last week's Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week, who had uh, two turnovers against Kansas State. Down. You know, well, we're going to take a timeout. It looked as though he just fell. Mm -hmm. uh, no score, 9 07 to play opening quarter. We'll be right back. Well, in case you're wondering where that is, uh, Buffalo Herd is located within sight of Interstate 70. You can see the cars going by just west of Denver. Where the Buffalo. <laughs> I wonder if that's where Ralphie goes after her run. I don't know. It's it's a wonder that some students have not gone out there and put heavier numbers on the yeah. side of those buffaloes. Well, Asante is on the bench and is up in in the lineup is P.J. Smith. Third oh. down and a short and a flag comes in. Yeah, there was movement on the right side. Boy, of I'll tell pins. you, yep. one of the things. Proud of the snap. Number 77, five-yard penalty. Remains. That's a huge mistake. This is an oft.
penalized Colorado team. And that has seems like a small thing, but that's not small right there. You have come all the way out from the two yard line. And the way Nebraska had lined up, there was a huge gap over the left side. I would assume they called a quarterback sneak now, and you, it looked like they could have just walked for the first down, gotten out of uh, the shadow of their own go post. And now they're in a situation where. I think you've got to throw a screen or something a wide receiver screen. I don't think you want to sit Hanson in the pocket here because with this pass rush you could get a safety. Looking. Going to run it caught from behind and the tackle is made by Turner Barry Turner the senior out of Antioch Tennessee and that is short of the first down so taking an opportunity mm. for a short first down away from yourself it's uh, just not good business they've already punted to Nebraska earlier and they got field position inside the Colorado 50 uh, that's like 20 foot putts you just don't make a living on those things. Delano's kick not going to turn over but that left handed spiral coming down at the 45 and the tackle is going to be made right there. Excellent coverage. Niles Paul on the return. So we'll take a timeout. Still no score and we'll get to see the Huskers again at offense. So we are back and explain what we're looking at here on the sidelines. That's linebacker coach Brian Cabral and he is from the islands. So he wears a lay and a lava lava during every game. It's a tradition he's had for several years. Well we'll see if it brings him luck. Nebraska this time not across midfield but about four yards from it. So Colorado on two punts has given the Huskers really good field position blitz coming off the high corner and the hit is made from right there and that's a really nice play by Chappelle Brown another one of the seniors he's from La Puente California and a lot of people really doubted him when he came in because he's so small but he started for four years now and when you talk to Ron Collins the defensive coordinator who early on is showing his hand he's going to bring pressure from his secondary right now Nebraska not knowing where these guys are coming from but he said of all the seniors this is the guy I'm going to miss the most he wasn't supposed to be good he uh, is five foot seven 46 starts yep. 46 starts for him pitch back they run it into the boundary and a little hit behind the line of scrimmage again it's Chappelle Brown as they had flip sides speaking of the corners and he's right there to put a stopper on Nebraska again now it's third down and the line to make is around the 44 yard line well watch how physical Brown is on the edge here watch this inside receiver he's going to go out and try to put a block on Brown and Brown just chucks him headbutts him and goes right to make a tackle that is a tough tough guy I think Brown's going to get a shot even as so small as he is at the next level because of plays like that eight snaps five total yards because of the two sacks for Nebraska they're showing blitz again this time off the near corner flag comes down I think they, yep it's going to be delay of game yeah Hickman the center Offense. five yard penalty and just like Colorado, Nebraska's offensive line has really struggled with penalties. And that Hickman, you get the silent snap count, meaning you look between your legs, and when you get the signal from the quarterback saying he's ready, you pull your head up. There's a certain amount of time that goes, you snap it. And he didn't, he never saw that Lee was ready to take the snap and got the delay a game. Third down at 18. Lee quarterback draw. Boy, he gets smacked down hard again. Chappelle Brown with one, two, three tackles. I know he had to have the other ten as well, but <laughs> I'll tell you, when you look at the play-by-play -play on this one that comes from the official score, they're going to say it was a one-man army out there. Small army in size, but a big army in heart. He's a one-man three-and-out crew. I'll tell you, here's a guy, though, that can flip the field, Henry, with his punting. And look at this kick. In this altitude, all the way back to the three-yard line. And the tackle gets by Warren. He's going to be stopped at the seven. Should've we had go. talked. It, it should have been let go. But Henry has become such a weapon for Nebraska. 
Well, ESPN2 has two college football games tonight. First of all, it is number nine, Pittsburgh against West Virginia. That's called the Backyard Brawl. 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then at 10, it is Nevada taking on number six, Boise. That one begins at 10 p.m. Eastern time. College football prime time on ESPN2. And both of those games may have some outcome on the BCS. Of course, Pittsburgh with only one loss, go to play Cincinnati next week. And then Boise State gave up almost 300 yards to Fresno State rushing earlier in the year. Nevada, the best running team in the country. 58 yards on the punt by Henry. So put a little asterisk by that one because the defense of Colorado did a good job. Ball is fumbled as it was handoff into the line by Stewart. Never really got the handle on it. And he is extremely fortunate that he made his own recovery. I think that was a bad handoff by Tyler Hansen. Looked like uh, he may not have put it down in his midsection. No, that's a drop. That's a drop ball. And you know, you know, the other day in practice when we were out there on Thursday, Stewart had trouble handling. He had trouble fumbling earlier in his career. He had two costly fumbles and a loss to Iowa State. So he has had some struggles handling the ball. That's McKnight in motion. And they use him. Uh, Almost like a little trap play. He's blocking inside, and Dominican Sue. They're not booing, but he is the man who made the tackle. Let's take a look at the game plan, Ed, uh, for Colorado. Well, they need to move whatever quarterback is in there, Hanson or Hawkins, move it around. You can't stay in the pocket. Double team Sue every time. Don't let him take over the game. And for Nebraska, stay safe in the secondary. They play a matchup type of zone. No real reason to take a bunch of risks because. I think the only way they get beat defensively is a couple of long balls over their head. So stay safe in that second half. Dean in motion. Pass is thrown complete and the screen up the sideline. He's going to make it out to the 15 yard line. It's Rodney Stewart. That was that was a little dicey there for a moment. There were red uh, and uh, <laughs> red and white colors all around the football and the quarterback. Well the one thing when you're studying film of Indomitian and Sue is how much recognition he has. He knows right away that this is a screen but he's gone too far so he can't go and chase it. But he was timing his jump and uh, Hanson did a nice job of throwing it around him. Otherwise that ball would have been batted down. Delano with the punt. And again about the same scenario. Caught at the 42 right up the middle 50 45. Hang on, he's gone. 20, 10, touchdown, 59 yards. Niles Paul, Nebraska. Flat kick. That ball came off of Delalo's foot a little funny, kind of drove a little bit, and they had a perfect middle return. And you hear the crowd here. This is, uh, there's a lot of Nebraska fans here. So that was a Colorado ball that had been punted, and the official had to come to the sideline and now get a Nebraska football if you wonder what's going on. Like putting a new baseball in play, but they uh, they had their own and they are named their school names are on them. Extra point attempt by Henry is up and good, and just like that, seven to nothing. The Cornhuskers on top. We'll be right back. So. Same scenario three times three and out for the offense for the Buffaloes and uh, three kicks that were just nothing to write home about and very flat kick by Delalo and it's been that's what how this whole game started it was a back and forth punting game and uh, he made a mistake. Ball is muffed at the one yard line now picked up and Colorado is going to take over again inside their 10 yard line Brian Lockridge. John Saunders, let's check with you in New York. Ron in the Taco Bell studio update. Alabama fighting back against Auburn, down 14-7. Greg McElroy, 33 yards to Colin Peak. He takes it in for the touchdown, ties the game at 14, and Alabama's about to kick a go-ahead field goal. 
Okay, John, our situation here in uh, Boulder, weather is beautiful, but the situation for the Buffs has not been. They have scrimmaged deep in their own territory the entire afternoon, and this is the fourth offensive series. Brian Lockridge comes into the ballgame at tailback, along with Rodney Stewart, and now Nebraska wants to call a timeout. 7 nothing, Nebraska. Bo Pelini in the middle of that group, and that's Carl Pelini in the black hat and the black jersey. He is the defensive coordinator for the uh, Huskers. And they have to really like the situation that they've been in. Alex Henry has just kept the Buffaloes with their backs to the wall the entire first quarter. We've got 327 to play in this opening quarter. Quick out pass. Better get on it. That's a backwards pass. And you can see, well, the official is saying that it was not a backwards pass. Not going to argue, but I certainly, boy, when it looked like it. It sure did. It sure did. And with uh, review the way it is, if it's close, they're supposed to let things like this go. Let's see, he's on the three. Can't tell from this angle right here. It's awfully close. Awfully close. The official waved it off fast enough that he must have seen clearly that uh, it was forward. Rodney Stewart, the bone setback. Blitz coming off the corner, picked up nicely. Pass thrown way too far and incomplete at the 30. Andre Simmons, the intended receiver. And you, you are now in a position for Colorado. Your defense is playing pretty darn well. Uh, I think you have to think about six, seven yards here. I, I, not that you don't want the first down, but give Hanson maybe a quarterback draw. He's a good runner. You've got to start getting some field position back for your defense that's actually playing really well at the start yep. of this ball game. Yep, they are. But they're... Uh, Hanson is now one of five for six yards. Line to make. You've got to take it out to the 19-yard line. Nebraska leads it 7-0. Hanson. And a little touch pass in and out of the hands of the receiver, Devaney, uh, one of the seniors. He is out of Roseville, California. Came here as a quarterback and, in fact, had the uh, the game winner against Texas A&M, a touchdown pass. He was getting some extra work before the game with his quarterback. Uh, after everyone broke in, they were still working. But here you are, Delalo again. Punting from the F. He's been standing on that thing a few this, times. This is fourth punt in the first quarter. And we have 3.08 to play. This is a better kick. Spiral's going to turn over. And Paul on the run. Lost it for a moment and is pushed out of bounds. But still at the 44-yard line, Nebraska has simply not witnessed anything <laughs> deep in their own territory. No, the Colorado defense, as you said, Ed, has been playing very well. But here's some of them. And a lot of it is on blitzes. That was Burton on a blitz, then Bernie on a blitz, then Chappelle Brown, who had all three tackles on the last three and out. Uh, there he's making a tackle there when Zach Lee comes out. But uh, Ron Collins, a defense coordinator, he's dialing up a lot of run blitzes so far. Number 22, Rex Burkhead, a freshman out of Plano, Texas, comes in at tailback. He wears number 22, 5 11 200 pounds and he will get the handoff he has been injured and has not been healthy enough to really help the Huskers and is now back and of course with Halo now healthy they are in a much better situation running back well it was a big deal in the middle of the season when Halu hurt his shoulder at about the same time that Burkhead hurt his foot and they were they were all the way down to their fifth string tailback on Travius Robinson had to come in and play and he, he was fifth string coming in at the beginning of the season so that Burkhead and Helu back for the stretch run going to the championship pretty good deal little play action they roll the pocket and uh, dumps it off in a short pass to Connor Reed and Reed's not going to get very much and again the defense of Colorado folks is playing very nice football <laughs> against a team that is uh, that's highly favored in this ball game but uh, the situation with third down now well, let's just see what happens here well you need to find number 44 Mike McNeil if you're Colorado because he's the tight end for Nebraska lined up over to the right in the slot. He's been the guy that they've looked at almost every time in these situations.
Play clock is down to three. Blitz coming off the corner. Over the middle. Ball is caught. Nice pass and a nice catch right there by Niles Paul. And that will move the sticks. First and ten Colorado. Nice job Sean Watson that time. Mike McNeil went to run the out cut. And then right behind him came Niles Paul. So they crossed up the defense a little bit. And a really well thrown ball by Zach Lee. This ball's thrown on time and accurately. Now you can't throw it much better than that. You know, and a nice shot by Paul. He felt the defender on his back slowed down mm -hmm. enough so that he'd have a chance off. to catch yeah. it. Legate into the ball game at fullback, number 48, Richard Freshman from the state of Nebraska. And they hand it off to uh, Burkhead. And he will take it for about three yards around the 38 yard line. And this is a young man that uh, Nebraska is very excited about. In the last two years in high school, he had over 3,500 yards rushing and 89 receptions. So he's good between the tackles. He's got good vision, good power, but he can also break out and catch the ball. Jeff Smart making the tackle. He's another one of the seniors, and he could walk from the stadium to his high school and be there in about four minutes. It's uh, Boulder High School is just right down the street. Jimmy Smith also helped out on that last tackle. Burkhead has an opening, breaks a tackle inside the 30, still pushing the pile, and he goes to the 24 yard line. That's good for 14 yards. Ray Polk defensively for the Buffaloes. Well, if you're the Texas Longhorns, you're starting to say, okay, now Nebraska knows who they are. I, I think in the middle of the season, after those consecutive home losses to Texas Tech and Iowa State, they really lost their way. This team has a really good idea of who they are offensively, and it's straight ahead running. Right now, it is straight ahead to the second quarter, 10 seconds down to nine, and uh, Nebraska not even uh, contemplating running another down in this first quarter, and that is it. We are through the first 15 at a timeout on the field, seven to nothing, Nebraska leads. Colorado cheerleaders thanks guys and gals we appreciate it very much good look at uh, Zach Lee the junior out of San Francisco 6 2 2 15 and they scrimmage with a first and 10 you can see the line of scrimmage just inside the Buffalo 25 yard line Burke had the lone setback going to go to an open receiver over the middle caught, caught. touchdown Nebraska Ben Cotton. Well, when you see this big of a formation, you don't expect a play action pass. You expect to run. And Ben Cotton got loose on a post, and that was an, another nice throw by Zach Lee. He has really grown at the end of the season. Let's make sure he had this. The ball did come loose there at the end. But yep, he had it as he crossed. The ball came out after the touchdown. Another wonderful, wonderful throw, though. Zach Lee seems to be in a pretty good rhythm right now. Now a discussion with the officials. The previous play is under further review. Now from the first look, it seemed he had possession as he crossed the goal line. Well, see, ruling on the field is touchdown, and we get another look at it right here. Ben Cotton right there. And it appears that he yeah. has secured the football there. Yeah. Then when he hits the ground, the ball comes out. And the trailing defender, Jimmy Smith, does a nice job pulling it out, but he had possession. I think that's a touchdown. Of course, Ben Cotton, his father, Barney Cotton, is the uh, offensive line coach for Nebraska. Here you can see the time of review at the uh, top of the screen to let you know how long the this is, in fact, taking. Shouldn't take too long. I look pretty clear to me. Indisputable video evidence. Looks like it is a touchdown. Coach Pellini asking anybody at stripes close by, you really do think that what's going to happen is uh, it's going to stand what uh, was called in the field. And he's smiling, so Bo doesn't seem to be too concerned about it at all. Although we're now at uh, a minute and 12 seconds into the review. 
But this is again uh, Sean Watson was a couple weeks ago when we had them for the Oklahoma game talking about how they really had to reinvent themselves offensively. They just weren't sure who they were. They had all of those injuries including their offensive line. And now as uh, now it looks like we're going to get the call here. After further review the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. But what Sean Watson is now going to because they are going to be a run based offense the rest of this season into the championship game and then whatever bowl game they get after that. Now they're starting to get some of these big bodies in Mike McNeil. Uh, you'll see a couple different guys Kyler Reed Ben Cotton Ryan Hill who had a touchdown against Oklahoma when they bunch in. Now they're going to get the pass game out of that. Henry the extra point attempt and uh, Brett Mayer. The uh, also a punter is the holder number 96 kick is up and it's good and our new score is Nebraska 14 and Colorado nothing. Here's the kick Henry and this thing here is going to go good heavens out of the back of the end zone. So <laughs> this man is a weapon big thing for the Buffaloes uh, you know third down and maybe less than a yard and an offensive lineman moved and the whole sequence started I mean everything now they've had four straight three and outs you know you at the top of the show you mentioned that this goes all the way back to the big eight yeah that's what this feels like this feels like big eight football <laughs> Nebraska make no bones about it this is an old school program great defense turnovers kicking game and when you have a guy like Alex Henry this guy it's on you cannot say enough about the kicker punter for Nebraska three punts inside the three yard line in the last two ball games. So the Buffaloes from the 20 yard line go straight ahead with the running play and it's going to be good for about three. Stewart the ball carrier again. Interesting that they continue to run him into the middle of that huge defensive front and Stewart is only 5'6", 175 but uh, they have uh, throughout the season been able to move the football with him going between the tackles and that's what I was talking about. Three plays four four times yeah, and punting one of those uh, punts was uh, returned by Niles Paul Demetria somewhere into the ball game at tailback. Here's a pass caught at the 29 yard line close to the first down and that's uh, Ryan Dia sophomore out of Poway California. Look at that average start position. Uh, Alex Henry just has been masterful punting of course he had the wonderful Nebraska school record 57 yarder last year against Colorado under two minutes left to put him up 33 31 and then of course if Dominican Sue had the interception return for a touchdown to close out the game and this is this is the, the farthest that they have moved the ball down the field is their own 29 yard line straight ahead with the quarterback sneak and everything's in order and it's a first down Colorado and listen to the crowd. I guarantee you as hyped up as this crowd was when this game started had they picked up that first down when the lineman moved uh, I don't say they would have scored but I think they would have moved the football and <laughs> the sequences would have been different. Well and there's obviously a split of uh, opinion around these parts about Dan Hawkins and his team as well of course at the top of the show we talked about Hawkins being retained at least through next year so this crowd wants to see what they can look forward to next season. Thank to McKnight. And they throw the screen to the near sideline. And that is good quick pursuit. Sumler is caught immediately and a gain of maybe about three yards. And now it's time for the Affleck trivia question. Now this is a good one for here. What uh, year did the original Ralphie make her first appearance? We'll be back with that answer a little bit later. If you're uh, from this area, you probably have a pretty good idea. And if you're not, stay tuned and we'll let you know. In fact, we might even show you some, uh, some footage. In fact, I know we will of the original Ralphie and how it looked then. Hanson, play action, now throws in the flag, and that's McKnight trying to make the catch and hold on for a first down. And he came down right on the marker. Got to be a first down, Colorado. Well, Scotty McKnight has been the guy, the leading receiver three years in a row now for Dan Hawkins. And credit Cody Hawkins, Dan's son, for recruiting Scotty McKnight. He went to his dad. He played with uh, Scotty in a camp over one summer in high school. And he said, Dad, you got to get this guy here. They brought him in as a walk on in three years in a row now that he has led this team in receiving. Play is under further review. Now they're going to review the spot because that looked 
like a clean catch. Well, you can review both, the spot and the catch, but that looked like a good catch. And McKnight looks like he might be limping a little bit. Hey, punt return! It's under review! Uh, looked to me like a good spot and a good catch. So the ruling on the field is a pass is complete. And, uh... Well... Now the thing is, it looked his knee on that shot looked like before he had complete possession, it looked like it may have slid out. But because the ruling on the field was first down spot and a catch, you have to have indisputable to overturn that. I don't know that it will be indisputable. Let's take a look here. I think he caught it. And even even if you have a question, remember, it has to be absolutely indisputable that uh, he didn't catch it. But the spot looked good too. So it's 14 to nothing. The Cornhuskers on top. The uh, play under review. We, you can see the. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch and first down. Colorado. So again, a confirmed. Mm -hmm. Which means that the video showed that the call That's was right. correct. Yeah, and for people that don't understand that, and also for people, you got to keep in mind if there are lots of reviews. Don't point the finger at the seven guys that are out on the field officiating. Uh, <laughs> there's a replay crew up here is the one that is uh, either taking the time at that time. They were extremely quick and good as the handoff the tackle made by Crick on Rodney Stewart. Now you can see the size comparison as Stewart came walking back uh, after the tackle was made. He doesn't even come to the edge of the shoulder pads of those uh, huge defensive linemen, Sue or uh, Jared Crick either. Yeah, these fans of Colorado, though, remember a short back that uh, helped carry them to the national championship in Eric Bieniemy back in 1990. So they like him short here. Hanson now gets it away and the ball is intercepted. I think the ball got tipped. Gomes is the man who will make the interception. His arm got hit right as he was releasing the ball. And I believe it was Philip Dillard. Yeah, Philip Dillard is the man, yep. 52. Watch right here as Dillard goes to finish. He hits the elbow, the ball comes out. And Sue was right there as well. Yeah. So one more look. You can see his arm being hit. Turnover, Colorado. We'll be right back. Nestled in the Rocky Mountain foothills, uh, there stands a symbol of nature's unparalleled majesty. Red Rocks is a geologically formed open-air amphitheater not duplicated any place else in the world. Starting positions for Nebraska. Their own 47, their own 46, their own 44, and now at their own 48-yard line. Running play, hello. Puts a head down and just muscles his way for seven yards as he takes it to the 45. Benjamin Bernie making the tackle. We've talked a lot about Bernie and the things that he's done, but besides his accomplishments, also the five surgeries that you mentioned, he also was a two time all academic uh, athlete in the Big 12 Conference. And that's one of the reasons Dan Hawkins is being brought back. There is no question what Dan has done off the field with academics, uh, running some kids off when they got in trouble. He's, he's run a good program from, uh, from that standpoint. No, no two ways about it. Time now to answer the Aflac trivia question. What year did the original Aflac. Ralphie make her first appearance? And the answer is 1966. And here it is. Well, we, you know, <laughs> when you watch at the beginning of the game, they have it more down to more of a science now because uh, well, these people on the field, <laughs> And she's going crazy. I think it's that silly little hat they got on her. Well, you try but to uh, run an animal through what they see as a wall. It's probably going to be resistant to that. That thing doesn't know that that's paper. Lee fakes the pitch. And he throws the short pass. And that's Cotton again. And it's going to be a completion of about three yards. Defensively, that's uh, Tyler Alice who will make the stop for the Buffaloes. Number 58, sophomore out of the... Uh, San Bernardino. All the players around Nebraska talk about Zach Lee after that disastrous Iowa State game where Nebraska had eight turnovers at home and lost nine to seven. Really changed the demeanor. More relaxed, having a little more fun, and 
You can just see he seems to have more command than he did earlier in the season. Chappelle Brown now has five tackles in his first half. This is Helu still driving. I think they're going to say forward progress around the 33 yard line. Benjamin Bernie and Anthony Perkins, the two uh, safeties, combining on the tackle on that play. So now for the Huskers, again, they really have not had any stress on them as far as field position for this entire ball game. And we have 9.15 left to play until halftime. Got to take it to about the 29 and a half yard line. Here comes the blitz off the high side. Gets his pass away, and it is incomplete at the five yard line intended for Niles Paul. And it's going to be a fourth down. And now Henry, yeah, this is going to be a field goal attempt. Before the ball game, both kickers for Colorado and also for Nebraska were kicking field goals that were 55, 57, 58 yards with, with almost ease. This is into a little bit of a breeze. It'll be a 50-yard attempt by Alex Henry. He had the 57-yard record kick last year against Colorado. Plenty of distance. And wide right, no good. So mark it down at the 854 mark of the first half. Nebraska finally did something wrong. We'll take a timeout. Huskers lead it though, 14 to nothing. And we are back and uh, not a happy thing to think about uh, just one day after Thanksgiving here. Colorado's offense, 19 snaps today, uh, and they have not crossed midfield. When seeing this defense, and we saw Texas last week in person against Kansas, I am really excited. Even though Texas A&M played great last night, Gerard Johnson played wonderfully. I'm excited to see these two defenses, Texas and Nebraska, go head to head. Two of the very best in the country. Rodney Stewart, the tailback. This does equal the best starting point that they've had at the 33. Stewart. I'll tell you, for a little guy at 175 pounds, Dillard makes the tackle. That's tough sledding with those big tackles. Well, Saturday night, ABC and ESPN2 deliver two full national games. Notre Dame will take on Stanford, and Georgia will take on number seven, Georgia Tech. That is tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, ABC, HD, and ESPN2. Like 8 o'clock Eastern time. Sorry, Ron. I'd like to see Colorado start using a little misdirection, trying to get some things bounced outside. I, I know you want to keep pounding, so maybe you can set something up, but they're just not getting much in the middle here. Pass caught at the 40-yard line and then really tagged was Marcus Simas. And uh, he didn't catch a pass in the first quarter. Uh, just didn't have an opportunity. He was suspended the first two ball games of the year, so we did not see him in that Toledo game. Nebraska defensively right on the spot but Seamus is such a good add to this offense because they only had McKnight and gear now you add in another guy you have three people now that the defense has to worry about Hanson looking got it complete and that'll be the first down at the 45 yard line Scotty McKnight and you start paying this thing forward a little bit of course the news this morning with Dan Hawkins uh, is going to be back at least through next season. Uh, and you start looking at some of the youth on this team. Scotty McKnight, a junior, he's been the leading receiver threes in a row. This offensive line, which frankly has not played well this year, you've got to assume they're going to get better. And defensively up front, they were very young and they got better as the year went on. So I think the future a little brighter than what people may think. Reverse. Lockridge broke a tackle and then knocked out of bounds at around the 43 yard line. So there you go. Across midfield for the Buffaloes. First time, right? Yeah, first time. And yep. this crowd is loving it. I mean, they they were really pumped when this ball game started this afternoon and and the offense just well they kept starting so deep in their own territory that uh, they didn't really help themselves a lot. A little bit of a spark. Lockridge gave them a spark yeah. last week with yeah. that 98-yard kickoff return against Oklahoma State. So, well, and Seamus also is a yep. is a young man that uh, he has really been going uh, well with uh, what he has been doing. It's the first gain of 10 yards plus of the afternoon. Sees it complete, and the Buffaloes are in business inside the 25-yard line. Scotty McKnight. 
158 catches coming into this one. This is not an easy catch because it is thrown right. You can see Han O'Hanlon right there with it shading his eyes. McKnight, it took him a moment to find that ball because the sun was right in his face. Nice throw by Tyler Hansen. Crowd now up and making some noise here at Folsom. From the 21, handoff stroke. 15 at the 10. Cuts it inside at the five, and it'll be first and goal. Colorado with the three. Alfonso Dennard makes the tackle for the Huskers. Well, right when he got here as a true freshman last year, they gave him the moniker Speedy. Because at five foot six, 175 pounds, he is quick. He's got good vision. Cuts this back. Good blocks on that backside. And the outside linebacker didn't close it down quite enough. Almost gets the edge. Asante got caught in traffic there. He was coming up to make the tackle and uh, picked off by uh, the Buffaloes. First and goal. You can see the line of scrimmage is the two. Somewhere is the tailback. Want to throw it. Touchdown, Barons. Jake Barons, a senior out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And on Seniors Day, that is a huge player catch. Going to lay her gear deeper into the uh, corner of the end zone. Dillard bails out to get him and gets caught in the middle, and nobody picks up Barron, who had slipped out from that kind of H wingback position. Good call by Eric Keesaw, the offensive coordinator. Eric Goodman to attempt the extra point, trying to make it a seven-point ball game. And he does. 14 to 7, our new score at the 539 mark. And as we go to break, one more look at this touchdown pass caught by Jake Barons, a senior out of Senior Rapids. You see number 41 right there, just across the end zone line. Touchdown bus. Well, Colorado, Nebraska duel to a 19-19 tie as Nebraska blocks Colorado's 41-yard field goal attempt. You see all the snowballs and even an orange coming out of the stands at the block of the kick. As the fans tried to help out with a few snowballs, Tom Osborne walks out to talk with Coach McCartney, 19-19 tie. We did that ball game in uh, in 91. We had done a Thursday night game up at uh, Colorado State on Thursday night. It snowed like the Dickens there and snowed like the Dickens here as well. And these sidelines are so tight to the field. They had no place to take the snow, and there was very little room to run out of bounds, quite frankly. Good one to kick it off. This one's going to be eight yards deep, and Tim Marlowe says, nope, let's don't mess with this one. Time now to take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. It's a two quarterbacks, and we saw Cody Hawkins over there working with Tyler Hansen. He's really been a good backup guy uh, since he was benched uh, in that Texas game. And Hansen, that one interception, uh, he just got a little lazy in the pocket against a defense like this. You have to know the pocket's going to close. He got his arm hit, and you look at Lee's numbers, this is exactly what Sean Watson and his offensive staff want. You, we don't need big, big numbers. We need you to be efficient. So the worst starting position for Nebraska today, their, only, their own 20-yard line. And this is Halo squeezing through the hole for about five yards. B.J. Beatty making the tackle. He's been out the last two weeks. Beatty had a concussion that he received not in the ball game but on his own practice field. Yeah. It's amazing when you go back last year, Colorado had 220 player games lost to injury. And then they come in this year. Uh, they're young at their defensive line. They're inexperienced at their offensive line. So it's been a tough back half of last season and, and this season as well. But uh, I think bringing Hawkins back was the right call. Short drop. Going to run it. Nothing. Back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe even a loss of a half yard. Nate Bonsu out of Allen, Texas, a true freshman, making the tackle. His uh, ball club won the state 5A championship last year in the Lone Star State. And he's a young man again, true freshman. You can see he's got plenty of size, but just going to get better and better as he goes along in this program. And, and this Colorado defense played pretty well so far tonight, Ron. Hey, this afternoon. They, <laughs> They have not been the problem. There's no question about that. 
One of these touchdowns that Nebraska scored was a punt return by Miles Paul. Third down. Looking, looking, got a man. The ball is tipped and incomplete. A little too high for Niles Paul, although the coaches are going to say should have caught that one. Yeah, that was a wonderful read by Zach Lee. When Paul comes in, so Pelly, the middle linebacker, got between him and the ball. And, uh, yeah, you, you, you've got to catch that ball. Zach Lee did a great job. He, he clutched it because the, the uh, linebacker got in his window. He did throw it a little high, but that's a catchable ball. Alex Henry standing back to punt, this time from his own 10-yard line. And McKnight is the deep man for the Buffaloes. His two-punt average is 51 yards, and this one right here is going to improve it. This is over McKnight's head, and it's going to go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. I know he's missed a field goal today, but folks, this guy is a doggone weapon. He has flipped the field. It's at the 13. John Saunders, let's check in with you in New York. Ron, coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report, we'll update the status of Tiger Woods, who was in a car accident today, plus the Iron Bowl. And we'll revisit Colt McCoy's big performance from last night in a win over Texas A&M and discuss whether or not it was enough to help him win the Heisman Trophy. It's all coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report. So, Buffalo's take it over. And uh, the running play is going to be out across the 15. Rodney Stewart tackled by Pierre Allen. And we're just talking during the timeout about, again, about Henry and what he could do. A 62-yard boot, they're going to say officially there. So uh, his average will get even better. And, uh, you know, most of the times kickers are not necessarily uh, drafted. They're picked up free agent, but place kicker and punter. And he's only a junior. And he's good at angle kicking, getting that ball out of bounds inside the 10, and most guys in college can't do that. Hanson, ball is dropped, and probably a pretty good thing that a lost yardage at the 15-yard line. Mukamara making the play. Prince Mukamara, a junior out of Glendale, Arizona. And one of the guys that uh, was recruited by the previous staff, Bill Callahan's group, switched from wide receiver over to defensive back and Carl Polini said when we moved him over he wasn't quite sure he could be an elite guy but they they had big plans for him had that great interception return to the one against Oklahoma. Cameron Meredith into the lineup number 34 for the Huskers. He is a redshirt freshman and has really shown well. Pass thrown right to the defender that's O'Hanlon and he will take it in for the touchdown. Did the receiver ever turn around? No, never. Uh, Marcus Seamus was the intended receiver. O'Hanlon was uh, just sitting there reading the eyes of Hanson the whole time. And, and Hanson will lock in on some guys, and he did that time. And O'Hanlon uh, just sitting there. And watch Seamus run right behind him. It's like he's going into block. I, I think Seamus may have thought that that was going to be a screen over to the left, and he was supposed to go in and block O'Hanlon. Bad miscommunication. Extra point attempt by Henry is up and it's good. So of the 21 points that Nebraska has this afternoon, it won a punt return, now an interception return by O'Hanlon, who was one of those national defensive players of the year. So the Cunningham cam, uh, which was shot, and this one is up in Lincoln. Yeah, well, we were up there for Oklahoma. We were walking through, and we saw the life skills department, so we wanted to know what that was all about. Coach Osborne speaks to them on leadership. Uh, this week, we have people coming in talking about money management, just simple budgeting. It's a big issue on a college campus. Relationships, social networking sites. But it's mandatory from what we found out from him. And uh, all freshmen, you know, have to take that course. Everything from how to do a bank account to making the adjustment from high school to college. And a lot of schools do that, but usually it's within the academic department. But they, uh, Dr. Osborne thinks so they much of no that. no credit for this yep. one. Yeah, but they have to take an entire class for a semester. And, you know, I go back to when I was in college. Can you imagine how helpful that would be for a young student coming in, having to manage your time with what amounts to almost a full-time job in athletics and all of the things that go into it? I, I really commend Nebraska for putting the resources is behind a department like that and they help them beyond college too they help them with resume building and how to go out and interview it's a it's a great program that they run at Nebraska. Donata prepares to kick it off for the Huskers now on top again by 14 points. Lockridge the deep man and 
and is going to let it sail over his head. John Saunders, you got more on Auburn, Alabama, understand. Well, Ron, Auburn has hit the trail in this game. Second half now, Chris Todd hooks up with Darvin Adams. It covers 71 yards, and the Tigers jump in front 21 to 14. And we are back, so Auburn giving Alabama a headache today, 21-14 right now. And of course, that's being played down on the plains in Auburn, Alabama. And how interesting does it get for the national championship if Alabama loses today and then goes and beats Florida? You have two one-lossers in the SEC. Do they drop down in a TCU or Cincinnati become a part of the conversation? I think they would. Hanson this time under center. Hands it off to Stewart, and there's not going to be much going right there as he runs in the direction of Sue. Sean Fisher made the tackle. Here's a look at the BCS standings. So everybody sitting around waiting to see what happens with Florida, Alabama, and Texas. Uh, of course, we had Brad Edwards on last week in that Texas-Kansas game, and he had a really interesting point. If Oklahoma State were to lose to Oklahoma tomorrow, they are out as an at-large. It looks like if they win, they'll get one. So then the Big 12, the only way they get two is if Nebraska wins the uh, Big 12 championship and Texas gets an at-large, but that knocks Texas out of the national championship game. That's McKnight in motion. Play action. Nice job, and they throw it back to McKnight. 30-35, and out to around the 38-yard line. That's pretty good lick right there. In fact, the defender had to bear the brunt of it, and uh, Asante, I think, is down. Is that Asante who's down? No. O'Hanlon. Oh, O'Hanlon. Oh, Hanlon is down this time. Asante got uh, some cobwebs on a collision earlier back in the first quarter. And this was uh, uh, Asante. Oh, oh, Hanlon comes in to hit late, and Asante already has the ball carrier, and they have a collision. Yeah, so it's two people you're taking on at the same time. Here it comes right about here. So the... The hit is not just the ball carrier, but also the defender who is forcing the play. And you can see O'Hanlon getting completely spun around. O'Hanlon, the young man, of course, we talked about uh, off the top of our telecast today with three interceptions in the game against Oklahoma, was the National Defensive Player of the Year. Nebraska has had three of those this year. And that's what I thought. They're doing the uh, squeeze test on that left elbow. It looked to me like his left elbow may have caught the helmet uh, of Asante as he came in there. Well, he's getting up and going to come off under his own power, which is always a good thing. We've got 2.30 left to play in this first half. Nebraska 21 to 7. And the Buffs would sure like to tack on another seven to go in at halftime down by only a touchdown. P.J. Smith comes into the lineup. He is out of River Ridge, Louisiana. Played at John Curtis High School, a high school that has sent over the years, a lot of kids into Division I football. And now for Colorado, good field position, two minutes, 30 seconds, three timeouts. You can be pretty comfortable. You don't want to be slow, but you can be pretty comfortable with what you're doing here offensively. And again, he is under center rather than taking it from the shotgun. Play action, looking, wanted the screen pass, couldn't get it. Now Hanson's going to run, and a flag is down in the backfield, and he shoved out of bounds at around the 48-yard line by Gomes. Steinkuhler with good pressure for the Huskers. Yeah, it looked to me like Barry Turner. Oh, on the offense, number 78, 10-yard penalty. Yeah, I'll no. tell you what, from listening to his microphone, that wind may be a little bit stronger down on the field than we had anticipated or, or thought it was. It wipes out a 10-yard game. I mentioned Steinkuhler on the pressure. I mentioned Cameron Meredith just a moment ago. These are two young redshirt freshmen that Carl Polini just thinks the world of, and they, they bring them in without any reluctance whatsoever because they, they really, the, the production doesn't drop off any. And uh, marked down another big penalty against an offensive lineman. Remember that uh, Gibbons jumped earlier on that third and one down deep. Stewart hit hard as he goes across the 32-yard line, and Dominican Sue is right there to make the hit. 
Well, if there's any doubt when Nebraska is good, it's good for economies all over the place. This answers that. Look at all of the red around this stadium, and you heard that Sue. He is so powerful. Two guys blocking him, fights off both of them to make the tackle. He just, you cannot move him out of there. And that's, well, you know, he's so disruptive. We we saw the hit by the middle linebacker Dillard along with Sue that caused the errant pass and was intercepted uh, by the Huskers. Hanson. Ball is tipped as he throws him. Guess who? Baker Steinkuhler, the young man we were just talking about. Of course, his father is Dean Steinkuhler, who was an All-American offensive lineman for two years for Nebraska and went on to play for the Houston Orders in the NFL. And because of the incomplete pass, look at uh, Sue going over there trying to get another interception. Remember last year he had that interception. He scored in this ball game. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Off a uh, tip pass by his buddy Zach Potter. So it's third down. Line to make is just across the 48-yard line, and Stewart will run it. Going to be caught by the ankles and takes it back to the original line of scrimmage, and it's Cameron Meredith who will make the stop. And a nice timeout there by Nebraska. You get to fourth down because of the penalty. But uh, let's go back and check out that play. It, it just unbelievable. After the 57-yard field goal, the place is electric. Zach Potter bats the ball and watch the stiff arm. This is what was so impressive. Now watch this. He almost misses the ground with it. He tries to spike it, and I've never seen a ball that you throw it to ground and almost miss. Watch the direction, the trajectory when it comes out of his hand. Well, we don't see it. Okay. <laughs> but that was a, uh, a nice catch, a good run, and he just seems to be able to make plays like that all of the time. Uh, and he just has such an awareness about him, but he is so powerful. He's one of those rare guys who does not have to put a lot of weight on his hand when he's in his stance to fire off to make sure he doesn't get pushed back. He can actually squat back a little bit, read the offensive line, so that now he can play both sides of that offensive line, and that'll be such a key for him at the next level. You know, the most important thing, I mean, it says Indomitian for Heisman and that position, it simply never happened. Not to say that it shouldn't one day, but uh, the, the biggest thing, not really a concern, but the only thing he's he needs to be worried about and not concerned at all, and that's the draft. And that's when you'll find out how much respect people have for him. So here's Diallo with the kick and the left footer. Not a good kick. This is going to be a wobbly spiral caught at the 26 yard line by Niles Paul. 35 yards on the kick. And I, again, I think that was a, a really good timeout use by Nebraska. 51 seconds. You still have a timeout. And uh, with this thin air, I think your 40 yard line of Colorado is your goal. So 20. Call it 33 yards to pick up before you're in uh, Alex Henry territory, and I'm sure he'd like another shot at it after missing uh, that 50-yarder uh, 50 50 earlier. Yeah. yeah. Burkhead is back in the ball game at tailback, number 22, the freshman from Plano, and he's got a fullback in front of him, and that's uh, Tyler Legate. Play action, going to go on top, looking for Paul, and as they battle for it, incomplete. And that's uh, Jaleel Brown, the junior out of Phoenix, who had the cover there. You know, the young man we have not talked a lot about today that as we look at it one more time, and uh, the ball is tipped nicely by Brown just as it's coming to his hands. And that's Jimmy Smith. And Jimmy has had two back-to-back -back really good games against Nebraska. An interception return for a touchdown two years ago. And then Jimmy Smith last year on a fake uh, field goal, they pitched the ball back to the kicker. And he intercepted it with 58 yards for a touchdown. And then they're going to keep it on the ground. Uh, it would appear they're just going to try to run the clock out. I think that Bo Pelini saw that ball down the field and saw Brown almost make the interception, walked up to Sean Watson and said, uh, hey, coach, <laughs> let's get to halftime. Now, Colorado with three timeouts. Because last year after the fake, Bo was not real no. happy. They're looking to get three points, and it was a distance job. And all of a sudden, here goes Jimmy Smith the other direction, 58 yards for a seven-point difference. 14 seconds down to 13. And, uh, yeah, play clock and game clock, they're going to make it. They head toward the locker room, and we are at halftime. Little surprise that Colorado 
wouldn't burn a couple timeouts there and try to get a punt, maybe a block or something to change something around. So 21 to 7, our halftime score. The Huskers, let's go to New York. And here's John Saunders and Jesse Palmer. You're watching College Football presented by K Jewelers, where our score is Nebraska 21 and Colorado 7. Looking down on the sideline as the Buffaloes kick it off. And this is going to go nine yards deep into the end zone. Glad to see in that uh, shot there, the number 33 uh, was uh, doing a lot better. Matt O'Hanlon, who was injured back in, in the first half. First half, what do you think? Nebraska only has 89 yards, but they've got 21 points to show for it. And Colorado is their own worst enemy. They A flat putt gets returned for a touchdown. Receiver doesn't know what he's doing. Quarterback throws it right to O'Hanlon. He returns it for a touchdown. So now, defensively for Colorado, they've played well. They just need some help from their special teams and offense. And I think offensively, they've got to go back to some misdirection and move Hanson out of the pocket some. So Lee would give it to Halu. And a very short gain on the part of the uh, Corn Huskers. I want to show you a graphic that pretty well sums up what happened in that first half. Key first half plays. Paul, 59 yard kick return, punt return. O'Hanlon, 20 yard touchdown with an interception. And Henry, three punts, averaging 55 yards a kick because three of those went inside the 20 yard line. One of them at the three. And he is the Big 12's leader in punts down inside the 20. Just has a really good feel for uh, placement punts. Burkhead into the ball game at tailback. And he resets. He comes forward a, a couple of yards, which always means pass play, and that's what they got. And that is Drew Young. Normally, anytime you see that that uh, running back step up, he's looking to pick up uh, to help out the quarterback at a throwing play. So take a look right now at the Pacific Life game summary halftime stats. Well, you mentioned that 89 yards, and uh, it, again, Colorado has not played bad defensively. But it's the average start that's been the difference. A couple of penalties on the offensive line on a third and one down deep in their own territory. And uh, Henry early on just continued to give Nebraska great field position advantage. Well, for the I formation, broken play. The backs, the fullback and the tailback went to the right, and the quarterback, Zach Lee, went to the left. And he got twisted on the pile. Chappelle Brown. Boy, he's getting up limping. Mm -hmm. His leg is going to get caught underneath as Chappelle Brown falls right on it. And boy, that was a and, and Lee is now down. He has uh, taken a knee. So you would expect that Cody Green, the true freshman who started two games, is going to come in and maybe go to more of a running type offense. So it's a timeout for the injury. 21-7 Huskers. Ball number three, Nebraska survives a 33-30 in overtime. Eric Crouch will score from the one-yard line for the win against Colorado. This is in 1999, 33-30 the final in overtime. Well, into the ball game, Cody Green and. I wouldn't be surprised now if they really kind of uh, get conservative. He's a running quarterback. He's not a throwing quarterback. And with two healthy running backs and Halu and, and also in Burkhead, you know, get out of here and get ready for next week. Well, and it looked pretty. Zach Lee got tangled up pretty bad on what looked like a broken play. And I said before we went to go to a run-based offense, they are run-based. I mean a quarterback run-based offense because I think you're exactly right, Ron. You've got a guy who... Uh, is it quite the thrower Zach Lee is? I wouldn't be surprised if they don't throw it but a few times in the second half now. Blitz coming off the corner and there was a movement on the offensive line. So not a surprising thing. Cody Green, new quarterback, new cadence. And uh, Buffalo is trying to turn up the heat a little bit. Brought a snap. False start. Offense. Everyone except the center. 
five yard penalty remains third down. All right, that's the key right there. Everybody moved except the center. And meaning the center didn't snap the ball. Right. Here's a closer look at that injury to Zach Lee, the quarterback for the Cornhuskers. Wow, that leg really gets mm -hmm. tucked in underneath him. That's the reason he's on the sideline. And as we'll, we'll try to get word, but I'd be surprised to see him back in this ball game. Quarterback draw, and Cody Green, nothing. Going to be fourth down and punting time for Nebraska. A rod makes us a stop. And I think that one of the biggest reasons, even if Zach Lee is over there and he can walk it off or they can get some ice and get some swelling out, remember they are in the Big 12 championship game. And so uh, there's no reason if he's healthy to try to hurt him even more when you've got Texas on the horizon next Saturday. Now let's see if Henry can continue where he left in the first half, averaging 55 yards a punt. Scotty McKnight is the deep man for the Buffaloes. Now this one is not going to turn over so it's much shorter McKnight from the 28 returnable turns it upfield across the 40 to the 42 yard line. Well ABC Tuesday at 9 8 Central TV's funniest doctors are back and they're teaching a whole new generation of eager young minds. ABC Scrubs new class new laughs the all new one hour season premiere is on Tuesday and of course on ABC. 43 yards in a punt and 13 on the return. That is his shortest punt far and away of the afternoon. And, and maybe a, a little opportunity here for Colorado. Zach Lee now out of the game, so Nebraska, you know, is going to become even more one dimensional. See if you can't get a little something out of it with the first quote unquote bad punt. Close to the first down is Stewart. Dillard making the tackle. Gain of about nine yards. You can see Lee walking around on the sideline. That's a good sign if you're a Nebraska fan. Because if he were, if it were really bad, they'd have ice on it already uh, and, and starting the treatment. So second down and short for the Buffaloes. They trail by 14. Little play action. Pass is tipped in, is going to be intercepted by guess who? In Dominican Sue, now they're saying incomplete that he did not hold on to the football. But well, this crowd was ready to celebrate. <laughs> and he is upset with himself because he is usually pretty sure handed. Good. See, that's correct. Oh, no, he's so good. The other defensive yeah. tackle because Sue gets dominated with double teams so much. Balls, but yet came out. Yeah, good sure did. Yep. So Colorado now with a third down at about a yard to pick up the first down. And it goes straight ahead with a running play, and they'll have the first down. Rodney Stewart, not very big, but with his quickness, finally Will Compton put a stop on him. But for the Buffaloes, they'll move the chains. And let's give a little credit to this offensive line for Colorado. They went right at Indomitian Sioux, a double team, and they get him pushed back. Boy, that was a nice job by Miller. Just a good fit up. He had inside help from Stevens, the center. But Miller, a highly recruited young man, nice block on that one. Brian Lockridge, sophomore, comes into the ball game. Looking, looking, still looking, and now throws it short and stepping out of bounds after the catch is Dehan. And this is why Tyler Hansen, uh, when Cody Hawkins was benched, of course, he had two interceptions in a row against Texas. One return for a touchdown when Hansen came in. But Hansen, more athletic than Hawkins. Hawkins, a, a shorter guy at 5'9", 5'10", was having trouble with an offensive line that was struggling. But Hansen, a little better athlete, can get outside the pocket and make plays like that. So they go with the running play. Coming back to the wide side of the field. And Stewart is close to the 35 yard line, which, of course, is enough for the first down. Under 10 minutes to play, third quarter. Matt O'Hanlon, glad to see number 33 back on the field, and I'm sure that Husker fans are as well. On our telecast this year, he now has four interceptions, and uh, one of those for a touchdown. Under center goes Hanson. 
And just going to throw this one away. Scotty McKnight, the intended receiver. And when you have a guy like Indomitian Sue, you better have a bunch of different ways to get him blocked. And that's a double team with Givens. You better get that hand down, Miller. You get the hand up in the face, but they're rolling out. But that was a nice job by Pierre Allen, who was just outside of Sue, keeping his responsibility on the rollout. Scotty McKnight, the intended receiver on that last play, had four catches in the first half. And as we mentioned, he needs six more now to be the all-time leader receiver here from the Buffaloes. Nice move by Hanson. No place to hide this time. It dumps it off. And that's Stewart. And Sumner, I beg your pardon, and Sumner will take it down almost to the first down at the 25-yard line. So it's going to be a third down and short. Amu Kamara finally made the tackle for Nebraska. And remember when we saw Hansen on the first in the first half not feel pressure? This time he does an excellent job. Great move by Sue inside. Saw him out of the corner of his eye and spun out of there. And uh, as we mentioned a moment ago, it's that athleticism that has Hansen as a starting quarterback. What a nice play. Stewart back in a tailback replacing Sumler and they hand it off to him straight up the middle with a burst of speed a gain of five at its first down Buffalo's Barry Turner tripped him up and this is a really nice answer by Colorado and going at the end of this season going into the next year the entire key to the growth of this offense is up front and that was good zone blocking this drive in particular other than that one move by Sue when he beat Miller inside, I think they've done a nice job. So three wide receivers, two to the bottom of your screen, and now you see the motion. That's Devaney, the tight end, flipping to the right. Hanson looking, now throwing for the end zone. The receiver had run out of bounds, and uh, the hat of the official was thrown over there because he went out of bounds and then came back in. And this is a very young offensive line. Some very high, highly recruited guys in there. But they have uh, struggled to play consistently, uh, given up a lot of sacks. But uh, maybe this is a sign going up against a very good defensive line that they have it in them, something they can build on going into next season. Stewart and Lockridge in the backfield together this time. And it's going to be an option play back to Lockridge. Turns the corner and uh, then steps out of bounds wisely. Let's see, they're going to see out of bounds at the 13-yard line. And Lockridge, just a sophomore, they've moved him around, played him some at receiver, and you saw the speed right there because that was an option play that Nebraska played almost perfectly, but his speed got the edge. So another guy that they can start to develop and use in different ways. This is the 11th play of the drive. It all started at their own 41-yard line, but it's third down. They need to take it to the 10-yard line. Hanson overthrown, and a flag comes down. Yeah, I think they're going to get uh, Alfonso Dennard holding. Yeah, I believe yep. so. Dennard, who didn't play yeah, last week with an ankle. That pass was was really not catchable, but holding certainly is a penalty that will uh, that will stand here. Holding on the defense, number 15, half the distance, automatic, first down. And they're going towards the Nebraska fans, so you hear them <laughs> screaming their boos. Now you've got first and goal, and with uh, Hanson, the way he moves, I would want to roll him out. Uh, your defensive ends for Nebraska now need to know to try to keep contained because with an athletic quarterback, try to get him to see the field and give him a run pass option. That's McKnight who goes the middle receiver to the right, number 21. Seamus is the man at the top of your screen, but they give it coming back the other way, and Stewart is grabbed by Sue. And, folks, that's 305 pounds grabbing 175 pounds, and it doesn't work real well. Don't need physics to figure that one out. I don't know how much you want to be running between the tackles down here. A lot of bodies around the line of scrimmage. Double team. He's just such a powerful man. Fights off. So athletic. But uh, I'm not sure how much you want to try to be challenging number 93 and number 94 of Nebraska right now. Second down and goal from the six. Hanson looks to the right. 
McKnight, touchdown. the adjustment by Scotty McKnight as he runs out. He's looking to his outside shoulder, has to come back to his inside, but he got up limping a little bit, and he's still kind of, he's the holder. I, he, he came up earlier. He's got that brace on the right knee. He doesn't look like he's uh, feeling very good right now. Goodman to attempt the extra point, trying to pull the Buffaloes back to within seven. And he's got it. So our new score, 21-14. Nebraska's lead is shaved to a touchdown. Well, Lee has his headgear back on. And the way he was walking around, he, he looked. So if he's healthy and you got him spatted up, get him back in. Well, this is going to be a high spinner and short from the nine-yard line is Paul. Paul stopped finally at the 27-yard line. So ESPN 2 has two college football games. First at 7 Eastern. It's going to be Pittsburgh taking on West Virginia in the backyard ball. That's 7 o'clock Eastern time. Then followed at 10 p.m. Eastern. We head out west. Nevada against number six, Boise State. Something may have to give there, even though that game is on the blue turf. And Lee is back in a quarterback. Zach Lee. Burkhead, the freshman from Plano, Texas, back in the ballgame at tailback. And he's going to throw on first down. Paul, nope, throws inside of Paul and has it complete. Ben Cotton with his third reception of the afternoon. Not real long. They take it to the 32-yard line. Anthony Perkins making the stop. And if I were Nebraska, I would be watching Zach Lee very closely. He obviously very gingerly moving around on that left ankle. I know it's a close game. I know you want to win them all, but you've got a game next week against one of the best swarming defenses in the country. I would not want him to get hurt any more than he already is. This time he goes under center and they go from an eye formation. And Burkett straight up the middle has five, has ten, and is still churning those legs as he takes it to the 45 yard line. That's going to be a gain of 12 on the play by the freshman. Look at the acceleration. Just zone blocking, excellent job by Hickman, the center on the middle linebacker. But that that was a freshman who saw a hole and then just he bursts. He, he didn't wait. And I can see why the Nebraska coaches are excited about this young man. He stays in the ball game at tailback, and they go back to that shotgun formation. But they'll hand it to him again, right up the middle. And in traffic, got to have three. Defensively, looks like Forrest West. Another one of those true freshmen that uh, Ron Collins has been rotating in on his defensive line has good speed not a highly recruited kid but he is he has really played well uh, a true freshman out of Canton Connecticut came out here for a uh, camp uh -huh. got hurt his junior year in high school so a lot of people backed off of him in Colorado State in and got him audible at the line of scrimmage plenty of time on the play clock though the flag comes down and there was movement so instead of a second down and about six for the snap false start offense number 73 five yard penalty remains second down. and now for our big 12 update brought to you by dr pepper Texas wins last night 49 to 39 Colt McCoy 479 yards five total touchdowns had a 65 yard sprint from scrimmage and certainly did not help him or didn't hurt himself in front of a national audience and really a nice game by Gerard Johnson to Texas A&M. I think maybe the most improved player in the conference Gerard Johnson as out of the season Humble, went on out of Humble Texas which he, is just north of Houston. Pass is tipped. And on the break for the ball, plain possum on the play was Jalil Brown. Had the ball not been tipped, I think he would have intercepted. He it. was. He was sitting there really. He's the sitting hole. on this. Look at this way. Let's. Yeah, Lee just doesn't look very comfortable on that ankle. That was uh, Conrad Obi who got his hand up. But I think you're right. 
Khalil was standing there thinking I may take this the other way. Precheck is a man who got a hand on it. Obi, by the way, who had that block, had a blocked field goal last week against Oklahoma State. Blitz coming from the outside, stepping up to throw, not in time. Sack at the 39 yard line, Chappelle Brown. That is three sacks of the quarterback. And how many tackles does Chappelle Brown have now, total for the ball game? Well, Rex Burkhead, the freshman running back, saw him coming. Watch Burkhead try to go over there, but Brown makes a wonderful move to the inside to make the sack. That is eight tackles for that's Chappelle Brown. What a great final game for yeah, him. Yeah, for a, a senior day, that's a heck of an effort. Let's see what Henry does here. Gets it away. Yeah, it's going to turn over. Little high coming for the sideline. Gathered at the 14. Espinoza. Flag comes down. They're going to call a block in the back, and I didn't see it. Looked to me like the Colorado player had his head in front of the Nebraska player. 46 yards and a kick and three yards on the return. And I think they're going to get Josh Hardigan for a block in the back, but it looked like a clean block to me. There's no foul for a block in the back. Timeout. Chappelle Brown on the sideline, senior with eight tackles today. One of those is set. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to College Football, presented by K Jewelers, where our score is Nebraska 21 and the Buffaloes of Colorado 14. Hey, is that a gorgeous shot looking back into the stadium? The, the sun has finally started to go behind the mountain, so the lights are taking hold. But, uh, this is really a beautiful scene. The weather has just been magnificent. Look at this is what I'm talking about. Look at cold front supposed to come in tonight, and the ski operators are getting excited because Tuesday, I think, is supposed to be snow in the area. On first down, nothing doing on the running play, and that is in Dominican Sue, who is just on this play right here, just dominating. Also, Philip Dillard came in. Dillard had a really good ball game against Oklahoma as well, the game that we did. Well, watch the center. Ends up one on one because Sue came inside that time of Miller, and you're just not you're just not going to consistently block this guy one on one with collegiate offensive linemen. And I think even when he goes to the next level, I'm not so sure that NFL offensive linemen are going to have much luck blocking this guy one on one. I I really think this is a special town. Scotty McKnight back in the ball game, which for Buffalo fans really good to see. Will Jefferson in motion, and Hanson. Rolls way back to his right. Now throws it away and just throws it over everybody to the 48 yard line. Pierre Allen is the man that was providing the pressure. And if I were Texas and I was watching the tape of what to do with Indomitian Sue, the one I'd pop in is what Kansas did. Kansas came in and their offensive line was really struggling and they had a really good setup where everything was focused towards getting double teams. Colorado's tried that tonight, but he's uh, been a lot more active. And you remember that Kansas game, he only had two tackles. So if I were Texas, that's the game I would zero in on on how to handle number 93. In the ball game now, number 34, Cameron Meredith. He is lining up at right defensive end, the red shirt freshman. And Colorado quickly back to the line of scrimmage. And now a timeout has been called. Timeout. Colorado. Well, we talked about Sue and the, the things that, that make him good. Well, he's good in every facet of the game. Defending the run, he's got great balance. He uses his hands well. He's got a good burst in rushing the passer. Good moves at the line of scrimmage. So productive. Makes play after play after play and has tons of intangibles. He's a great hustle player. He uh, is very smart. He studies the game, and there is no question about why he is on almost every list you can win. And I wouldn't be surprised at the Home Depot Awards at the end of the season if he doesn't walk away. Well, he's going to need a, uh, a wheelbarrow <laughs> to take away some of the hardware I think he's going to walk away with. Yeah, he, he could. Interesting young man as well. We were sitting in the video room watching uh, tape uh, just before they, the day before they played Oklahoma, and he came in and sat down and visited with us. Uh, his degree is is not a problem. Uh, his father is already is an engineer and he his uh, 
Help me out, Ed. Construction Ed, Ed, management. Con construction yeah. management, yeah. And uh, a very, very bright young man. And spent the entire uh, offseason working with Carl Pellini, the defensive coordinator and defensive line coach, so learning about the defense. The whole what everybody defense. does. He's, I want to know what everybody does. That's McKnight in motion. Here comes pressure, throwing back against the grain, and it is caught at the 40. That's Seamus down the sideline, protects the ball and steps out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Hello, new ball game, my friends. We'll call you neighbors. This one's not done by a long shot. 2.55 left in the third. And this was what Colorado was desperately missing at the beginning of the season. Marcus Seamus was suspended for the first two ball games for a violation of team rules and they needed a big fast receiver and Seamus 6'2 215 pounds I was academically ineligible last year so just starting to get a feel and he and Hanson worked very hard together on scout team last year that's where they got it together longest play of the ball game 58 yards Hanson gets his pass away and throws it complete and that's Devaney Devaney I beg your pardon Well, and I think we're starting to see Tyler Hansen feel he, he looks so much more comfortable here in the second half than he did in the first half and such a difficult thing for Dan Hawkins to go through his son Cody of course he's had to bench him twice and he came out this week Dan Hawkins and said I, if I had to do it all over again I would not recruit my son not because of how hard it's been on me but how hard it's been on Cody Hawkins and all of the uh, grief he's had to take here comes the pitch back to Stewart Stewart with a burst of speed in the vicinity of the 17 yard line Cameron Meredith making the stop for Nebraska and now you, you're in field goal range and you've got third and short this to me is the opportunity third and just under three yards where I think a Ryer gear play action get your tight end maybe down the seam I think this is where you maybe try to pop one. Third down, line to make the 15. Here comes the play. Blitz up the corner. Picked him up just in time. Now tries to get the ball away, and it is incomplete. And I'm not so sure that Dennard didn't tip the football. It looked like a fumble to me. No, he's trying to throw it in. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. Well, it... Yeah, now they're going to get him for uh, intentional down. grounding, which is a huge penalty right here. Intentional grounding on the offense, number nine. That's a spot foul. Pass it down. And a huge penalty instead of the ball on the 17-yard line. Now you get it at the 34. Never leaves the pocket. Doesn't matter how far you go backwards. Sue knocked the ball away as he tried to throw it. But uh, Goodman has not been good on long field goals. Three of nine from 40 and beyond. So this is a huge penalty. 52 yard field goal attempt from the near hash mark. Ball is down. Got plenty of distance. And that's going to be wide left. No good. Well. There's another penalty. We had the, remember the uh, motion by Givens when on that third and one. We had Solder with the holding call on a first down, made it third and forever. And now Hanson gets a uh, intentional grounding and, and Goodman can't convert. Well, you know, there, to me, there is a really good question. I don't want to argue with these guys in the stripes. They, they're right there and they see it. But to get intentional grounding called when you're being hit and harassed, uh, yep. <laughs> and the ball, your hand is hit, the ball is hit, and it comes out. You know, watch this right here. And it's, by the way, look at the agility of a 300-pound guy. Sue is just continuing to come, and as he throws it, as much as anything, I think it was a fumble. I, I would have argued yeah. that it was a fumble rather than an intentional grounding. Yeah, I thought right away it was a fumble. And Colorado Let me was ask you this: though. What was he doing under center? Why wasn't he up in shotgun. a shotgun? Yeah. Get away from that. Big rush. opening. Hello. Going to take it for the first down up to the 45-yard line. That's and, Chappelle Brown who makes the tackle. And if they would have called.
called that a fumble. An offensive lineman from Colorado recovered it about seven yards in front. Gets Goodman a little closer, who has had massive struggles. Maybe he has a little more confidence, and he hits it to go up 21-17. So either way, a bad deal for Colorado. I, I looked at like a fumble to me. Nine tackles now for Brown, and that is the last play of the third quarter. So for the seniors here in Boulder, the final 15 about to come up as the clock is down to 3-2-1. and one. So we head to the fourth quarter. Nebraska 21-14 over Colorado. Thank you, the ladies uh, from Nebraska, the cheering squad. Nebraska, Colorado, Folsom Field, Ron Franklin, along with Ed Cunningham. And uh, the numbers, Sue, five tackles and a sack. And for Colorado, Brown, ten tackles and a sack in the ball game. How about that? From the 45-yard line, first and ten for the Cornhuskers. And Halu will take it forward for about four and a half yard. Well, the, well, they're scrumming like there yeah, was a fumble at the yeah, bottom of that sure pile. Are. And Colorado Colorado's saying wow. that they have it. It looked like just a, a very vanilla play, it and sure he was did. being tackled there. And uh, all of a sudden, you can see. Unreal. They're going to give it to him. What a flip. Harad comes away with the football. Your partner, 98 rather than 90. And that was uh, Will Precheck, the defensive tackle who was in there fighting. Looked like he had a piece of a loose face mask. But Gray comes up with it. Not, won't be surprised if we review this because it looked like Halou's knee was awfully close to being down before that ball came out. Sophomore out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, 6'1, 300 pounds, Eugene Gore. What a huge turn of events for Colorado. Colorado right back on offense. Running play. Stewart, look how quick. Cuts it outside. Gets a block from his quarterback inside the 30. And still going all the way to the 21. He's right in front of the cheering section. And the noise has just gone up a few decibels. What a great job by Tyler Hansen. All he's doing is, is running out his fake. It's a zone read look. And he's running out his fake, and he sees Stewart, so he takes off down the field. And watch the block he gets on Larry Asante. Not much, but Asante had to adjust his angle and has to come over and make the tackle uh, a little bit later. That was a nice job by Hanson. So it is a first down at the Husker 21-yard line. Seven-point ball game. Stewart stopped at the line of scrimmage, not going anywhere. Well, John Saunders, you got a final on Alabama-Auburn, I understand. Ron, we do indeed in this Sports Center in game. Greg McElroy here, four yards passing to Roy Upchuck Church, rather. They go for the two point conversion, no good. Chris Todd going deep on the Hail Mary last play, and Alabama's undefeated going to the SEC championship game. Well, I have a feeling at that time Auburn did want to upchuck. Ball is tipped and almost intercepted by Nebraska. Intended for Seamus, and that was Gomes who was right there. Now you're in that uh, same spot that Colorado was in their last drive, third and long. And uh, you've had the intentional grounding, which didn't look like the right call on the play. However, backed up Goodman for that field goal. But uh, I would not want to see Hanson standing in this pocket. Uh, maybe a draw to Stewart or a screen over to the right. Third down. They need to take it to the 11 yard line. Down by seven. 21 14. Swings it out too tall for Stewart. Trying to lob it over the defense. And that was Barry Turner who was out there covering on the play had dropped off from his defensive end position and this uh, has not been a strength for Colorado the kicking game uh, on field goals unbelievably Eric Goodman uh, and, and Hanson just came off of that too soon he had three receivers running beyond the sticks and he went to Stewart too soon well this was going to be placed down at the 27 yard line a 37 yard attempt just inside that left hash mark Eric Goodman 
good pass and he missed this one. Mm. Unreal. So let's take a timeout. 1335 left in our ball game. 21-14. The score remains. Well, number two, Nebraska is stunned by number 14, Colorado, as they are dismantled 62 to 36. This in 2001, Colorado went on to win the Big 12 title, while Nebraska still went on to play in the national title game against Miami, where they lost 37 to 14. And that's Ryan Awida on the left, the backup walk-on kicker, former soccer player at the University of Denver, warming up. Uh, you've, you've got to give him a shot. Eric Goodman is just not, not in it right now. Looking to throw and just going to throw this one away. Zach Lee doing the smart thing there instead of uh, connecting with Niles Ball. He was too well covered. Seven point ball game. We still got 13 27 to play. If you're just Nebraska this half, 14 plays, 45 yards, two punts, and one turnover. Second down and 10. Burkhead remains in the ball game. This time, Legate comes in at fullback to provide some uh, blocking for him. He takes it right up the middle and is going to have a gain of about six yards, and a flag is down. Yeah, they're going to get uh, BJ Beatty for uh, jumping into the neutral zone there. Side on the defense, number 59. That's a five yard penalty. Remains second down. Just if you're Dan Hawkins, and of course, if you're just joining us and don't know, Dan Hawkins was granted at least another year as the head coach of Colorado this morning. But just so frustrating. His team is giving great effort, and it's just continual mistakes and penalties. Instead of a third and long, you give them a second and five, uh, just continually hurting themselves. This time Lee will go under center. Burkhead the freshman behind him at tailback and he's in the deep set and they hand it off to him and he cuts it up and is open 30 35 and now out to the 40 yard line a huge first down 15 yards on the running play by uh, Burkhead. Watch this offensive line Hickman the center. They're all blocking back. What a crushing, crushing block by Ricky Henry, the right guard who pulled around. That's called a power play. Everyone blocks down, tries to get double team. You pull that backside guard, and Henry just blew up the hole. First down and 10 from their own 40-yard line. They lead it 21 to 14, and Burkett straight ahead, and he's going to have a gain of six yards in the play. Will Precheck will make the stop. Richard freshman out of right here in Boulder. Precheck was a defensive end and they moved him inside. And anytime you do that, rather than taking a defensive tackle and moving him out, that normally means you're slowing down a little bit. But you move him from the speedier position inside, it's always uh, a better situation for the defense if it can be handled. Second down and four. Clock now under 12 minutes to play. And it's going to be Burkett again. High stepping. It's a good thing he did pick up his feet. He didn't get caught in traffic there. But as he hurdles the man at the 50 yard line, Bonsu will make the stop. But that's enough for the first down. And what a good job by Burkett holding on to the ball at the very end there. Chappelle Brown, who's played a sensational game because Burkett was going down, was doing everything he could to rip that ball out. And Burkett, a true freshman, put both hands on it. And that's, that's exactly what Bo Pelini likes to see with this drive. Eat the clock. Don't turn it over. First time that they've crossed the 50-yard line since uh, their missed field goal. Burkett again. Nothing left. Takes it to the right. And stopped after about three. We'll catch it all to flash forward on ABC next Thursday. Alliances will be made, faith will be tested, and trust will be broken on their amazing new episode. ABC's Flash Forward on Thursday, 8 o'clock, 7 central. Hedlou comes into the ball game at tailback, spelling the freshman Burkhead.
Hello, right up the middle, puts a head down inside the 40, down to the 37 yard line, and he picks up the first down by a half yard. Benjamin Bernie on the stop. Nice job by Hickman and also Ricky Henry blocking. And this offensive line has gained so much confidence. Go back to midseason when we looked at some film of this offensive line, and of course, without Hello healthy because of that shoulder. They were plugging guys in. They had some injuries, but this offensive line has been gaining a lot of confidence down the stretch here. This career high for Burkett, 66 total yards in this ball game. Hello, nothing this time. Boy, he gets whacked back down. And now this is exactly the way Nebraska has been drawing it up since midseason. They were trying to plug in a million different things, what type of offense they could run. And uh, this is what they went to after that Iowa State game where they had eight turnovers. The whole staff sat down and said, what do we have to do? And uh, of course, getting Roy Hallou healthy and now Rex Burkhead is back. Look at this clock just being melted away with this drive. Under 10 minutes to play. This is the eighth play of the drive. Nebraska leads it 21 to 14. Burkhead again inside the 35 to the 32 yard line. Anthony Perkins. I like the looks of this young freshman Burkhead. He's got good patient, patience. He's got great acceleration. You're in Alex Henry territory for a field goal here. I would think Burkhead gets it again between the tackles. And if you don't go there, Mike McNeil has just come back in the ball game at tight end number 44, and he is uh, lining up in a slot to the left side. And it looks as though yeah, Colorado wants to call a timeout on this third down play. So we'll take it with him. 21-14, Huskers on top. Located close to downtown Boulder, Flagstaff Mountain offers climbing and hiking trails with the uh, sweeping views, as you can see right there, of the city of Boulder. Third down. They need to take it to the 28-yard line. Looking. Throws his pass. Got it complete. And that's Paul. Niles Paul. Well, we saw that exact same play earlier. And you said when we before we went to break, Mike McNeil was the guy to look at. Watch McNeil. He's going to run an out cut. Scrapes off of yeah, him. And right underneath him, excuse me, he's running a corner, but right underneath of him, timing it up is Niles Paul running the slant. And again, Zach Lee, that's two times in this game that he's thrown a perfect ball on that exact route. And you see this drive, seven rushes, 43 yards. Look at five carries on this drive, make it six. Cuts it back in the middle, and I'll tell you what, he's got good vision. He's also got great <laughs> determination. Beatty finally stops him, but that's almost another first down. John Saunders in New York, let's check with you. And our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update, how about Tony Pike of Cincinnati? 32 of 46 for 399 yards and six touchdowns, a school record in a big win today over Illinois. Text vote to 345-345 from your mobile phone to vote and for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Ron, back to you. Hey, thanks, John. Second down and short for Nebraska. Burkett again. Boy, it's a quick cut. He cuts it right back into the middle. It's a first down at the 11-yard line. Absolutely no wasted steps. When he sees it, he puts one foot in the ground, cuts and goes. He has good acceleration. Uh, he's got good vision. He runs hard, tough. Uh, this young man's got a nice, bright future ahead of him. And now you've got him with complimenting Roy Hallou. This is an awfully good backfield that middle of the season was gone for Nebraska with injury. Twelfth play of the drive. It all started back at the 20 yard line. Zach Lee Burkhead. He's going to wind up with close to four yards on that play. Yeah, it's still 21 14 but this is one of those drives that feels like a definitive statement in a ball game. So the question becomes as you start getting ready for the Big 12 championship, will Burkhead and Alou be able to find some space against Texas's defense, which swarms to the ball a little different uh, than what they practice against uh, at Nebraska. More different looks, blitzes, things like that. Second down, two tight ends. 
Burkhead, right side, he'll score. Touchdown, Huskers. Watch the size of the hole. Well, Burkhead got a. Uh, he got a little lucky he didn't call get called for movement before that snap got up on his heels but look at the size of that hole the right side of that offensive line DJ Jones in there for Marcel Jones and Ricky Henry the right guard he's starting to look like a good powerful blocker. 55 yards on this drive on nine carries and he still maintains an average of over six yards per try as Henry hits the extra point and knocks it home and we have got a 28 to 14 ball game. One more look. As we head to break, Rex Burkhead. And what a mammoth gaping hole. Good for six. Wow. So we are back. 28 to 14, our new score with 643 left uh, in our ball game. And you're looking to the eyes of uh, Brian Lockridge. Well, they need a, a big play out of him. They got one last week, a 98 yarder against Oklahoma State to take the lead back in the second half. Adi Kunalik prepares to kick it off for the Cornhuskers. This one's going to be at the goal line. Lockridge. Well, time now to take a look at our city inside view. Well, let's take an inside view of Indomitian Sioux and how powerful and fluid an athlete he is. Watch, he takes the center, Stevens, throws him out of his way, trying to double team with Miller, the right guard, but watch the change of direction. The balance knocks the ball out of the hand. Of course, this was called intentional ground. He looked like a fumble, but this, he's got power. He's a smooth athlete. He's got explosive ability. Now, the amazing thing is, you said he outgrew it, but where he learned his athleticism is in soccer. And that's reason he has such good feet. Far sideline, little wheel route, and it's, oh, that's, and that's Asante. Nick. Yeah, I'll tell you, Asante is the man that uh, I'm sure the officials didn't agree, but he's the man to hit with the headgear down against uh, Reesing in a Kansas game. His same man that stood over the Oklahoma player that got almost knocked out in that ball game. I uh, don't. You're putting your hands up, son, but you you have a real history. I'm sorry. Personal foul. Illegal hit on the defenseless player. Number four on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. And I think should have been ejected. The player is out of bounds. He goes in, uh, targets a defensive player at the shoulders or above. Remember, you don't have to lead with the helmet. Even if that was inbounds, when a player is defenseless, you cannot target them at their shoulders or above. And at some point, when a player has propensity to do this, you, we've got to start kicking them out of ball games. Lockridge at tailback. Hanson now looking and throws it, and it uh, is complete at the 42 yard line. Scotty McKnight, what is it now? Seven catches for him. Seven catches, three more, and he would become the all time leading receiver for the Colorado Buffaloes. And now Colorado going fast because that clock got eaten, eaten alive by Nebraska. From the shotgun. Good protection. Deep over the middle. The ball is incomplete, and now flag comes in. And it's going to be Compton that's going to call pass interference. Ryer Gear, the intended receiver. Ryer, another one of the seniors. He's out of Grand Junction, Colorado. There's Gear in the slot. And this is uh, Compton has to go through him to make pass the play. On the defense. Well, I don't know. Number 51. That looked like pretty good defense to me. With an automatic first down. Five fifty five left to play in our ball game. Buffaloes trying to come down see if they can cut it to seven again. Demetrius Sumler a junior out of San Diego comes into the ball game at uh, at tailback. Where's number eight. Well, that's going to be overthrown McKnight the intended receiver. Kind of feel like you know Dan Hawkins of course with his background at Boise State all that offense they used to run up there 
Of course, he lost Mark Helfrich, his offensive coordinator, to uh, Oregon late uh, in the spring. And that's one of the things that uh, he's been fighting for. And, and now that they've given him another year, none of his coaches are under contract. And he wants that type of backing. He says, if you're going to require all of this from us, we're going to need some backing. And something they're going to have to clear up. Two tight ends in the ball game, two wide receivers. And here comes pressure. That was from Crick. Now he's going to run it at the 40 and gets out of bounds at the 38. Dennard defensively. And I think Colorado, they're trying to get the personnel they want, get going. The, the clock will start as soon as uh, the ball is set and ready. I think they can get, I'm not sure why they're huddling. I, I think they should be going all no huddle, hurry up here, down two touchdowns. 534 and counting left in the ball game. 28 14, Nebraska. Got the middle screen, got a blocker. That's Seamus and one man. And that is Asante who will make the tackle for the Huskers, not before a gain of 23 yards to the 15. Well, as hard as this is, Seamus needs to be just a touch more patient. He's got Stevens, the center out there. If he slows down just half a beat, even if the center can't go get Asante, he can run behind him and make it up. Under five minutes now. That's McKnight in motion. He's going to call a timeout. It's final timeout of the ball game for them. We will be right back. So we're back in uh, Boulder, Folsom Field. 28-14 is our score with 4.52 left in the ball game, And uh, so far for Colorado in the red zone. Uh, this half, they scored a touchdown, and then they missed a field goal, and then missed a second field goal. Well, the good news is you're not going to try a field goal. It's That's touchdown exactly right. or bust here. Yeah. So. so they got four downs yes. right here to take it to the five to pick up another first down. And Summer, who was a larger back in the ball game, replacing Stewart. Summer's 2.15. is caught that's Seamus and a nice defensive play Amukamara is right there to make the stop on Marcus Seamus and they are right back of the line of scrimmage second down and 10 here comes Sue throws this one Incomplete. Scotty McKnight tried to help him out, coming back toward his quarterback. Yeah, and the and nobody's Nebraska, oh, and that's that's Sue. Yeah. <laughs> the Nebraska coaches are losing their mind because a holding call by left tackle Solder was completely missed on Cameron Meredith. They wanted them backed up for a hold. And you know, you mentioned four downs. They are in four down territory because because they have to score. So yeah. uh, I think a slip screen to a receiver here. And try to get something. I, I just don't think sitting in the pocket is going to work right now with this pass rush. The Carl, cranked up. Carl Polini, defensive coordinator for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Remember, Colorado has no timeouts left. Clock is stopped right now at 4:23, and a flag comes down. It's going to be delay a ball game. And now you've got third and 15 again need to get inside the five for the first down uh, I, maybe a quarterback draw you want to cut this in half get to a fourth and five or six you don't want to be at fourth and 15. Well they were going to come to the sideline and, and that's what Hawks said stay on the field because the, the clock as soon as they step it off starts counting to get us down to three down to two and movement this time to the right tackle. Well, those aren't Sue's, those are Boo's. Yeah, you're exactly right. And they should be. Boy. Both uh, the right guard and right tackle moving before the snap. Right over the middle, almost intercepted. It's going to be fourth down. 
Ryder Gear, the intended receiver. All right, so fourth and 20. Five yard lines the first down. This is uh, not an easy call for an offensive coordinator. Uh, I, but you, to me, you have to move Hanson. Uh, the wide side of the field is to the left. He's better to his right, but it's almost like a Hail Mary situation because you have to get someone the ball, I think, beyond the sticks. This defense too fast, too good, I think, to try anything short of the sticks. So move your quarterback out to give him some time. Fourth down, going to take it to the five-yard line in a timeout called by Nebraska. Well, while we got this timeout, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And the three gentlemen who have been the National Defensive Players of the Week at a separate time this year, you see what they have uh, done in this ball game today. And it just, uh, it makes you have an idea of what uh, the kind of contest you're going to see in Dallas next Saturday against the Texas Longhorns when uh, Texas faces off with this uh, Nebraska team. Three defensive players that are very, very uh, special in what they do. And, and of course, Texas has got a, a bunch of defensive players that are very special in what they do. And I think for Nebraska to have a chance in that ball game, it's all going to be on Sue and Crick in the middle. Uh, Texas's offensive line has been a little up and down this year. They played pretty well last night, opened some huge holes uh, with Colt McCoy, and that was a little wrinkle, the run game with the quarterback that we really hadn't seen much, and McCoy goes for 175 rushing last night. So, to me, that will be the absolute. You know what? The only thing, I'm not arguing with, but, but Ed, when you're 12-0, you, you can hardly say that they're up and down and scoring almost the scoring leader in the nation. <laughs> Fourth down. Going to go long, and it's going to be picked up. Duvaney didn't even have a shot at it. Amu Kamara all the way back to the near sideline and steps out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Three turnovers against the Buffaloes. And just threw that one up for grabs. They were trying to get gear long. They, uh, Amu Kamara had backed up a great call by Carl Polini, the defensive coordinator. He had the coverage was perfect. Amu Kamara is back deep, not letting anybody get there, and just reads this. Uh, it's almost like a punt. But there was there was uh, just a young quarterback not seeing the field really well at that time. John Saunders, let's check in with you in New York City. Ron with this fourth center right now brought to you by Best Buy. As we reported earlier, Tiger Woods was released from a hospital after a minor car accident just outside his house. He was treated for face lacerations and then released from the hospital. Meanwhile, Alabama stays unbeaten. They'll go to the SEC Championship against Florida. Greg McElroy, four-yard touchdown pass to Roy Upchurch. That's the difference. Okay, John, thanks very much. We only have 343 left in this ball game, And for Nebraska, they start pointing toward the Big 12 championship next Saturday night uh, in uh, Dallas, Texas. Bo Pelini, second year as the head coach for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And, you know, they have, boy, they've come a long way in a lot of areas. But as he preached to his team all week long this week, he said, we're improved in a lot of spots, but we're not good enough to overlook mm -hmm. anybody. And let's don't go into Boulder and just spoil the whole party and uh, and get upset. And, and they have taken care of business uh, here, you know, when they have needed to. Bo Pelini uh, put a gag order on anybody mm -hmm. talking about Texas this week around the office anywhere. He said, everyone else can talk about it. We're not. Well, not really the victory formation, but... Uh, Pretty close to it with two tight ends and two wings. And the running play will go straight ahead to the 48-yard line. 
Well, a reminder, Saturday night, uh, ABC and ESPN2 deliver two full national games. First of all, it's going to be Notre Dame needing a big win. They face off against Stanford and Georgia against number seven, Georgia Tech. So tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific time, ABC HD and ESPN2. And, of course, that one also HD. Presented by Southwest Airlines. Third down, Burkhead gets the ball and he will cut it up the middle. Got to be fourth down and he'll need about two yards for the first. See, the game clock is at uh, 215. Well, make no doubt about it that uh, the impact that uh, Carl Pelini and Bo Pelini have had on this team. When you go back to 2007, Colorado scored 65 points on this defense. Kansas scored 76 points on this defense and with a lot of the same players and Dama can sue uh, Amukamara O'Hanlon with a lot of those same players look at the improvement defensively they still have a little ways to go offensively but at least they found an identity and what they like to do no question about that no question and now moving up under center is that Ben Cotton no that was Ryan and Hill. Ryan Hill the sophomore out of Arvada Colorado and looking as though they were going to snap the ball to him and have a fake punt. You know what they were doing trying to draw him yep, outside. Exactly. <laughs> that was a wonderful little trick there because it doesn't matter back up five. It gives Henry a little more room to sky it or get an angle and try to pin Colorado deep. That was a nice try by Nebraska. Well, here's the kick, and boy, it is a really good one. Going to hit deep in the end zone. A little better than he actually than he probably wanted. Now, speaking of Texas, last night down at College Station, Holt McCoy, 65-yard run from scrimmage here, and proving that he not only can throw the football, but that he also has really good speed. And you know, uh, obviously his Heisman hopes went way up last night, a huge national stage. But I also think late in the season that uh, his stock has gone up as an NFL prospect as well. All those struggles and him keeping it together. And a look at these two teams that'll square off next Saturday night. But let's not forget the, 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 the last uh, great defense that Texas played against was Oklahoma. And that was a long time ago uh, in Dallas in the Red River. So it'll be interesting. I think they're much improved offensively, Texas is, than when they played uh, against Oklahoma. Uh, Double teamed 29 out of 64 plays today in Dominican Sioux. <laughs> Might not have been enough. It's probably <laughs> not a season high in him either, is yeah, it? No. Clock stops momentarily. 59 seconds left. Well, you could uh, read his lips when he said false start Colorado. 59 ticks left on the clock in this one. What a nice crowd for Nebraska. You, yeah, they. You, you always hear that, you know, they travel well. They, I don't know that any program travels better than Nebraska. You know, same thing. Hanson. Sue is after him and he just throws it away. One of the things about these two defensive tackles, as large as, large as they are and as active as they are, they make half of their tackles either that far from the line of scrimmage or, or sideline to sideline, from one side from the hash mark all the way inside the hash mark on the other side of the field. They never stop running. With the speed that Texas has on the outside with Marquise Goodwin and those guys, yeah. they're going to get a workout next yeah. Saturday night. Pass thrown complete, and that is uh, Seamus on the receiving end. Clock stops at 40 seconds. 
And for uh, Colorado and Dan Hawkins, who found out this morning that he would be returning as the coach for Colorado next year. Some things to build on. You know, they went toe to toe for two and a half quarters with Texas. Great comeback against AM. Went toe to toe with Nebraska here. Uh, they've just got to get over the hump with some of these mistakes. Going to go on top. Far sideline and is intended for Seamus. It'll stop the clock at 34 seconds. You know, the scary thing, we met with Bo Pelini before uh, the Oklahoma game, and even though they lose Sue, they lose Asante, they lose O'Hanlon, he said, we may be better on defense, and it was because Stein Cooler, who you mentioned earlier, Meredith, they've got some defensive backs they're redshirting they really like, and uh, his system's really taken hold. Second down and 10. Here comes pressure, and the screen is dropped. Sumler dropped the football. And Stein Cooler was the man who was applying the pressure. Interesting that Baker, they wanted him like his father did. They wanted him to be an offensive lineman. And, and he said, uh, nope, I want to start off on defense. And he continued to improve so rapidly on defense. They said, okay, young man, we're going to leave you on the defensive side of the ball. And what they see so far uh, with his size, agility, and speed, he really gives them uh, an impactful situation there. Playing at the uh, tackle. Finally got it away, and it is caught at the 45-yard line. Seamus came back and made the grab. <laughs> Clock stops with 13 seconds. That has to be the longest play of the ball game <laughs> as far as time. You know, and as they come to the line of scrimmage, I'm going to say with 13 seconds left to this absolutely wonderful and talented crew who's been away from their family during the holidays. We thank you, young men and young women. You do an absolutely fantastic job. Without you, none of this would succeed, and we appreciate your efforts. This one is tipped. Now, nope, Basati could not grab it for it to hit the ground. Two seconds is all we have left on the clock. I, I'm really looking forward to next Saturday night. Uh, just the way that Nebraska plays defense. I, I'm not sure how consistently they're going to be able to move the ball against uh, what is arguably the best defense in the country in Texas because of the secondary. I think you, you, the, the advantage, I think, goes to Texas because of Earl Thomas and Blake Gideon. Earl Thomas just playing on another planet right now. But uh, it'll, it'll be a really entertaining ball game. Last play of the ball game, unless we have a penalty. And throwing not really a Hail Mary. He's got two people out there. Caught by McKnight, and he's got a score. Unbelievable. No time left on the clock. If Bo is not happy, and I imagine Carl Pellini is even less happy than his brother. And you know what? Not a bad way for Colorado to end their season. 56 yards. Believe that's the longest play of the season for them from scrimmage. So you go into the off season, okay, you lose 28-21, but at least you have something positive to go in and get focused and try to get yourself over 500 next year. Awida comes in to attempt the extra point. Ryan Awida, he is the backup uh, place kicker. Cody Hawkins is the holder. Good look at uh, Scotty McKnight. Now he's gutted out a nice performance today. He had that. Uh, he's got seven catches today. Yep. So he'll have to go into his senior year to become the to overtake Michael Westbrook as the leading receiver in Colorado history. Extra point does not have to be contested. And here comes the referee. And this one is history. I think they can start talking about Texas now, can't they? Yes. Yep, they can. Uh, this one is now history. Our final score is Nebraska 28 and Colorado 20. Now let's head back to our Times Square studio with John Saunders and Jesse Palmer.